Today, these players and you at home will test your trivia IQ as we play Trivial Pursuit, the interactive game. And here's the star of the show, Wake Martindale. Thank you very much, Randy West. Thanks, everybody, and welcome to Trivial Pursuit, the interactive game. Our show is rather unique because not only do our players here in the studio compete, but several times during the course of the show today, you folks at home will get a chance to win prizes by playing a game very similar to the one we're playing here. All you need is a touch-tone phone, and at the end of the day, one home player will win this fabulous vacation to where, Randy? Outrigger Hotels Hawaii, where value stays in style and you'll stay in style. The beachfront Outrigger Waikiki with accommodations to the exclusive Kuhio Club concierge level. Outrigger Hotels Hawaii. So stick around for that, will you? And in the meantime, say hello to our nine players in studio today. Hello, players. Hello, Oh, Stan. Stan, you were so far off. That was embarrassing. You want to try that again? Hello, players. Hello, You're still off, Stan. These nine players will be competing today to become one of three contestants to play Trivial Pursuit, the classic game which follows this interactive game. And I want to wish all of you the very best of luck. We're about to start round one. I'll be asking five multiple choice questions. We always start a question by showing the four possible answers. For example, take a look at these choices. Simon, Sarah, Samson, and Sid. And the question is, in the children's game, who says what you have to do? Of course, that's simplistic. Once I start asking the question, you'll have 10 seconds to punch in your answer by pressing the number on your keypad, which corresponds to that answer. For example, if you knew the answer to that question was number one, Simon, Simon says, all you'd have to do is push number one on the keypad. Each question is worth up to a thousand points, and the faster you punch in with the correct answer, the more points you can score. After I ask five questions, the six players here with the highest scores will move on to the second round. Here's your first set of choices. If everybody's ready, pick a day. Pick one of these days. Sadie Hawkins Day, April Fool's Day, Boxing Day, or May Day. Which day was a creation of cartoonist Al Cap? He said Sadie Hawkins Day. You got it. Eight out of nine got it. One missed it. <laughs> Kathy, you never heard of Sadie Hawkins Day? I'm sure I did. Sure you did. <laughs> you can score up to 1,000 points for each correct answer, and your scores are determined by how fast you punched in your answers. So, Let's reveal the scores for question number one. Everybody got a little score there. Kathy's going to do something about her score this time. Let's move on to question number two. Here are your choices. We have Macbeth, Hamlet, Othello, and The Merchant of Venice. In which of these Shakespearean plays do you find the character Shylock? That's number four, The Merchant of Venice. Seven out of nine got it right that time. Paul came up a little short that time. And also Aaron, Aaron up there on top. He's sitting there very quietly. He didn't think I was gonna catch him. Let's add these scores to your totals, okay? There are the totals to this point. Now it's time to go to question number three. For these choices, from these famous offspring, J. Paul Getty II, Frank Sinatra Jr., John F. Kennedy Jr., or Charles Lindbergh Jr., which of these has never been the victim of a famous kidnapping? John F. Kennedy Jr., obviously. Fortunately, has not been the victim of a famous kidnapping. Six out of nine got that right. Three of you missed it. Let's add up the scores now. We add to your previous scores, and this is the way the totals look at this point. As we go to question number four, and these choices... Simarang, semicolon, semaphore, semantics. Which is a system of signaling using flags? Number three, semaphore is the answer. Semaphore, and everybody got that one right. See, I finally, I told him I was going to be nice to him before we ever started. See how nice I've been so far? Most, most, most of the time. All right, let's add those to our previous scores. And there you have the totals. Now let's see who our six leading players are as we go to the final question. Two on the top, three in the middle row, and one on the bottom row. Stands one of our six leaders. One question left, and remember you must have one of the top six scores to move on to round two. Here are your choices. Jonah, Joseph, Jacob, and Jedediah. Which name is synonymous with an unlucky person?
Jonah is the answer. Three out of nine got it. Stan and, and Al and up there in top center, Aaron got that one. They were the only three. Let's total up your scores now to see who's moving on to the second round. Okay, and there are the top six scorers. Roberta and Aaron on top in the center, Mitch, Marna, and Al, and Stan in row number one. So I'm sorry we have to say goodbye to three of you players, but we do have some nice parting gifts and our thanks for playing Interactive Trivial Pursuit. And that sound means now it's your turn to play at home. Pick up your telephone now and call the number on your screen. Give it a try, 1-900-933-9988 to play a Trivial Pursuit play break. Hey, thanks to all of our players at home for playing that game. Remember, all play break winners will be competing in our playoff later today for an exciting vacation getaway. And if you didn't get a chance to play that time, We'll be coming up on another play break right after this round. I've got five more questions now for these studio players, all six of them. After that, we'll be down to our three winners who will get to compete on Trivial Pursuit, the classic game, which follows this half hour. Okay, all of our player scores are back to zero. Here's the first of our five questions, and your choices are, let's do some networking here. ABC, CBS, NBC, or ESPN. In 1992, what TV network offered viewers its Olympic triple cast? NBC. Four got it right, two got it wrong, so four out of six got it. All right, let's find out how you scored on that question, see how quickly you got in on that. There we go. Now let's take a look at our next choices for question number two. From these literary figures, Ernest Hemingway, Herman Wolk, James Michener, and Thomas Wolfe, who wrote the novel The Cane Mutiny? Herman Wook, four out of six, got it right. Stands in there on top of that. Roberta was. Marna got it, and Mitch got it, and Al and Aaron came a little short, but maybe this time. Let's total up the scores. Here's where everybody stands, and here's your third question. Choices for number three are Sam Bass, Rock Bass, Black Bass, and Largemouth Bass. Which of these is not a fish? <laughs> How many of you said Sam Bass? Five got it. Who didn't get it? Marna! Marna! <laughs> Marna, you don't fish, do you? No. <laughs> Stand up and take a bow, Marna. I like your answer. I thought that was terrific. <laughs> okay. Well, we know how many got that right. Five out of six. And let's add that to your scores. There are the totals. Here's your fourth question now. Your choices are... Wow! Oomph! It! Whoopee! Film star Clara Bow was the what girl? Clara Bow was the it girl. The it girl. Obviously, some of you aren't old enough to remember that. Of course, Stan is. <laughs> and look who got that one. Marna got that one. All right, we add that to your scores. Marna, that should help you considerably. There we go. And the three players in the lead among the six, there they are, Stan, Marna, and Mitch up there. Okay, one more question to go. The final question of the contest, this will determine our three winners and who goes on to play Trivial Pursuit in the next half hour. The choices are the Arizona, the New Jersey, the Missouri, and the Maine, and the question aboard which U.S. battleship did the Japanese surrender in World War II? Battleship Missouri. Missouri, only three out of six got it. Yeah, it was Stan and Roberta and Al got that one. Three out of six. Our computer is now adding your scores to determine who will get to play on Trivial Pursuit, the classic game. Who will it be? Well, I'll tell you, one of them will be Mitch Group, a marketing director from Winnetka, California. Congratulations, Mitch. Our next player to play in the next half hour, Stan Brent, an architect from Los Angeles, California. And our final player to qualify, would you believe, Marna Deitch, the bartender from West Hollywood, California. I would ask her to stand up and take a bow again, but I'm not going to put her through that again. Sorry, we have to say goodbye to three of you, but we do have some nice parting gifts. And here's Randy to tell you about one of them. Wake some of our participants will receive Andy's After Dinner Candies. We've all enjoyed these treats at restaurants, hotels, and airlines. Now you can enjoy them at home anytime from Andy's Candies. Okay, thank you very much, Randy. And that sound you hear always means that it's time for you at home to get another chance to test your trivia IQ. 
as they just did here in the studio. The call-in countdown has begun another Trivial Pursuit play break. Pick up your phone now and call the number on your screen, 1-900-933-9988, before the call-in countdown reaches zero. It only costs $4.98 to play. Join in the fun. Call now. It's easy, and you could be a Trivial Pursuit play break winner. Randy, tell us what prizes our winner will pick from, please. Sirocco Juvenile Table and Chairs. A wallpaper collection from James Seaman. Or today's featured prize, Toll's five-piece coffee tea service. An elegantly designed hand-applied border has grace and style for your special occasions, furnished by Toll Silversmiths. Today's Play Break winners will compete this afternoon in the playoff for our grand prize, an Outrigger Hawaiian Vacation. I'll ask you five multiple choice questions, just like I did for the studio players. You'll have 10 seconds to answer by entering the correct number on your touchtone phone. The caller with the highest score, combining the most correct answers in the shortest amount of time, is the winner. And don't forget, you do need a touchtone phone, and you must be at least 18. We'll be back to play our game with you right after this. They're called a one-armed bandit. Hope you had fun playing that game at home. All of today's Play Break winners will be competing later on in the day for our vacation getaway. And our congratulations to three fine players, Mitch, Stan, and Marna, for winning this game. And, of course, you all get to appear on Trivial Pursuit, the classic game, in just a few minutes. And that's not all for winning the interactive game. You get a nice prize, and Randy's going to tell you about it. Yes, Wink, it's a home library of reference books, including the new revised 10th edition of Merriam-Webster's Collegiate Dictionary. It's America's voice of authority, furnished by Merriam-Webster. Okay, Wink. Watch for Mitch, Stan, and Marna in a few minutes when they compete for more cash and prizes on Trivial Pursuit, the classic game. We'll be back with another game for you at home right after this. This is Trivial Pursuit, the interactive game on the Family Channel. We hope you had fun playing at home, and don't forget to watch for our three studio winners as they compete for cash and prizes on Trivial Pursuit, the classic game, coming up in a few minutes. See you then. Some of our participants may receive Kenwood Appliances brings good health to your kitchen with their state-of-the-art juice extractor. Handles all types of fruit and comes with a special half-liter jug for quick storage from Kenwood Appliances. And Lee Press On Body Tattoos. Press on a fashion statement. Last for days. Easy off. Press on fun. Lee Press On Tattoos. And at last, nationally advertised nail products at an affordable price. Fancy fingers, sculptured nails, acrylic or gel. Quality made affordable by Lee Nails. And knows better the spray, relief without addictive drugs. And knows better the gel that soothes with lanolin and aromatic vapors from Lee. And brush away nail fungus with antifungal nail treatment. And for tips or repair, Lee Antifungal Instant Nail Glue. Lee in the nail beauty product section. There are loads of laughs on Fam TV with Maniac Mansion and Big Brother Jake. Friday at 6 on the Family Channel. Trivial Pursuit is next. It's time to test your Trivia IQ on the world's most popular trivia game, Trivial Pursuit. And here's the star of the show, the man who knows how to tell when a gorilla is angry, <laughs> Wake Martindale! Thank you very much, Randy West. Welcome, players. Thank you so much. Welcome to the television version of Trivial Pursuit. You know, I saw both the old and the new version of King Kong, so I'm something of an expert on gorillas. Did you know that you can tell when a gorilla is angry because he sticks his tongue out at you? It's true. <laughs> Try it. Try it. And I've also heard that if he's really angry, he goes, na 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 na. <laughs> Try it. You'll like it. We have lots more trivia to cover today. Aren't we silly sometime? To help us, we have three contestants who will be answering questions and competing for a chance to play our bonus game for a fabulous trip to Mazatlan. Our first player to play is Mitch Group, a marketing director. Mitch, what category would you like to start with? Uh, entertainment. Okay. What feminist editor of Ms. Magazine wrote an expose on Playboy after posing as a bunny? Gloria Steinem. You got it. That's the way we play the game, Mitch. Say hello to Stan Brent, an architect from L.A. Stan, select a category, please. Uh, we'll try sports and leisure. Okay. For this question, 
What Danish toy was used to build a model of Mount Rushmore out of one and a half million little plastic bricks? Mitch. Legos. Lego is right. Yes, you have two edges. Our third player is Marna Deach, a bartender from West Hollywood, California. Marna, select, please. Art and literature. Question. What legendary outlaw was first mentioned in print in a 1378 poem titled Vision of Piers Plowman? Mitch or Stan? Stan? Rob Roy? No. Time's up. The answer is Robin Hood. Rob Roy, close as we're going to get with that one. Okay, Mitch, it's your turn again. Pick a category. Um, history. For this question, what Depression-era criminal gunned down outside Chicago's Biograph Theater once robbed a bank by fooling witnesses into believing a gangster film was being made? John Dillinger. That's it. You have three wedges. Just like that. Stan, pick a category. Um, there are two left. Let's try geography. For this question, what is the longest river in the United States named for the Indian word for father of the waters? The Mississippi. That is correct. <laughs> Marna, there's only one category remaining. It's science and nature, and it goes to you for this question. What scientist coined the word radioactivity for the rays that eventually killed her? Uh, Madam Curry. That's correct. Madam Marie Curry. Very good. So we're all out of categories, which means that's the end of our very first round. Before we take a break, we always like to find out a little bit about our contestants. Mitch, you picked up three wedges. You lead. You need nine to win the game today. You're an expert on the Bronx. Why? Well, uh, in the 1600s, Manhattan was all in New York City. So when people wanted to go to the country, the entire farmland known as the Bronx today was owned by Jonas Bronx. So people would say, instead of we're going to the country, we're going to the Bronx. And that's why it's the only borough that has the in front of it. That's a great trivial pursuit <laughs> explanation. Isn't that terrific? I didn't know that. Are you, you wouldn't fib to me, would no, you, Mitch? PS 78. They <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stan, you picked up one wedge. You need 11 to win the game. Uh, you've traveled to every country in the world except Antarctica. Every continent. Well, that's what I said. Uh, oh. You probably <laughs> thought I said every country. Yes. <laughs> so, Sam, you don't hear very well, do you? What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> every continent. I'm, why not Antarctica? Too cold. <laughs> Stay away from that right. one, right? Marna, you picked up one wedge. You need 11 more. Uh, you've driven cross-country not once, not twice, but three times and on a motorcycle. Yeah. My goal is to have that motorcycle in 48 states. I'm up to 38. So now, I have one more cross-country trip to go. Is this something you did by yourself? Mostly by myself. Aren't yeah. you a little frightened to do that sort of thing? Is this a day Just and age? scared enough to do it safely. Okay, Marna. I'll leave that up to you. Marna, Stan, and Mitch, three excellent players. We'll be back with round two of these players where the categories change, but the trivia keeps on coming right after this. Welcome back to our game of Trivial Pursuit. We're about to start our second round. All of the questions in this round relate to TV. And the categories are classics, sitcoms, drama, kids and games, stars, and wild card. Stan, Mitch started last time. This time we start with you. Pick a category, please. Um, let's try stars. Okay, so be it. What popular 70s variety show took its name from its comic star, who played such characters as Geraldine, What You See Is What You Get, Jones, and Reverend Leroy? Marna? Flip Wilson. That's right, the Flip Wilson Show. And Marna, it's your turn to pick a category. Uh, kids and games. For this question, what was the stage name of the dog that trainer Rudd Weatherwax originally called Pal? Lassie? Yes, Lassie. <laughs> Wasn't hard at all. <laughs> Sometimes we tend to make these a little harder than they are. Mitch, select please. Classics. Classics it is for that blue wedge. Weekend Update, a parody of television news, has been anchored by, among others, Chevy Chase and Dennis Miller on what weekly television show? Saturday Night Live. You got it, Mitch. Stand back to you. Uh, let's try the wild card. All righty. It proved all's fair in Love and War when what designing woman was hired to replace Susan Day in that hit show? I don't know. Anybody? She got in a little late, did she not? Late, yes. The answer is Annie Potts. Annie Potts. And now it's Marna's turn. Uh, drama? Marna, you are at nine to win. That is a bonus question. Get this right, we'll give you a chance to pick up an extra wedge and $100 in cash. First, the question. Let's watch this news footage. Watch our screen. It's all about how she eventually becomes accepted by the community, um, what it's like to be a, a single woman 
in that period, that time, an educated woman. She um, ends up adopting three children. Marna, who is that actress? Jane Alexander. No, it is not. Mitch. Jane Seymour. You're right. Jane Seymour is the answer. Now you have a chance at $100 and another wedge of any color you choose if you answer the follow-up question. In that clip, Jane Seymour was talking about her new TV series. What is the full four-word title of that series? Dr. Quinn, M.D. No. The answer is Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman. So, oh. Mitch, it is your turn. Oh. You didn't pick up one wedge for that. All right. Sitcoms. For this question, when Mel sold his diner, Mitch, he gave each of the waitresses, including Vera and Jolene, a $5,000 bonus on the last episode of what sitcom? Alice. Yes, you have that wedge. And you need six to win. All right, that was the last of our round two questions. Let's start round three with six new categories. And they are world of places, world of music, world of people, world of fantasy, world of science, and world of leisure. Remember, we've hidden some bonus questions up there. Marna, it's your turn to pick the next category. Oh, uh, world of music. All righty, for this question, it is a bonus two-parter. Get the first question right, you'll have a chance for an extra wedge in $100. Listen to this immortal piece of music. Marna, who composed that piece? Beethoven? Yes, Ludwig von Beethoven. Now, for an extra $100 and an extra wedge, the familiar first four notes of Beethoven's fifth translate into Morse code as dot, 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 dash, which coincidentally stands for what letter? S? N no, no, it's V for five, Beethoven's fifth. Okay, Mitch, it is your turn to select the category. Uh, world of Fantasy. This is your question, Mitch. In the comics, what color is associated with the superhero's arrow and lantern? Red. No. Marna. Green. Green, yes, green arrow, green lantern. Stan, it's your turn to select. Uh, let's try World of People. All right, and it is a bonus question, Stan, a two-parter. Get the first question right, you'll have a chance for an extra wedge plus $100. You could use this, you're 11 yes. wedges away. Watch this historic news footage, Stan. While the war goes on in Vietnam, that this burden has to be carried equally by all of our people, and not just by the poor, not just by the Negroes, not just by the Puerto Ricans and the Mexican Americans as it is at the moment, must be borne by all people, and I'm in favor of a lottery system where everybody takes their chance equally. Stan, that was Bobby Kennedy on the campaign trail during his ill-fated run for the presidency. In what year did that campaign take place? 1967. No. Mitch. 1968. You are right, yes. For $100 and an extra wedge, at the time of that speech, Robert Kennedy was a U.S. Senator representing what state? New York. <laughs> you should know that. New York, right. Which wedge would you like? Um, green. The green wedge. All right. Marna, pick a category, please. World of leisure. All righty, for that orange wedge. In what sport was Greg LeMond competing in when he became the first American to win the Tour de France in 1986? Bicycling? Yes. You had that wedge. Pitch. Uh, world of Places. All right, for this question. Mitch, you could put a fjord in your future if you travel to what city, the capital of Norway? Uh, Oslo. You have it, and you have that wedge. We have one left, and it goes to you, Stan. It's on the world of science. Because its horn can sell for as much as $30,000, the black variety of what African animal is now endangered? The rhinoceros. You have it, and you have that green wedge. That's the end of round three. Let's recap our scores. Mitch, you're in the lead with four. You need four wedges to win. Stan, you are the furthest back at ten. You need ten wedges to win. Marna, you need six to win. But anything can happen in our final round. It has happened that way many, many times on our show. We'll be back with the final round right after this. Welcome back to our game of Trivial Pursuit. We've come to our final round, and once again, we'll be playing our basic categories, the ones from round one. I'm going to start this round by asking a question to all three players. So if you're ready, hands on buzzers. This is for control of the game. Mitch, Stan, and Marna. In Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea, the fishermen struggle to catch a marlin, only to have it eaten by what predatory fish? Stan. Shark. Yes, the shark. Stan, you have control, and you are ten back. Select. Uh, let's try history. All right, for this question, Stan. 
The TVA was a Franklin Roosevelt New Deal program for electrical power in rural areas. What do the initials TVA stand for? Tennessee Valley Authority. You have that wedge, yes. You need nine to win. Um, let's try pink. Pink being entertainment. Yes. Stan, what non beatle guitar legend played lead with that group on George Harrison's song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps? Mitch? Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton is the answer. You are four away from a victory, Mitch. Select, please. Uh, art and literature. This is your question. Archibald McLish's Pulitzer and Tony Award winning play, J.B., is loosely based on what beleaguered character? Scrooge. No. Stan or Marna? The answer, Stan, I'm sorry, you were late in your, your buzzer. The answer is Job, Job. Here's another question, all three hands on buzzers. This is for control only. What is tender meat marbled with? Stan? Fat. Fat is the answer. You have nine to go for a win. Um, let's try geography. All right, for this question. What Scandinavian country shares the Jutland Peninsula with a small section of northern Germany? Denmark. Yes, you have that win. You need eight to win. Um, let's try sports and leisure. All righty, for this question. Willie Moscone, the world champ 19 times, is considered the greatest player ever at what indoor game? Billiards. Yes, billiards or pool. Pool or pocket billiards. Stand select, please. Uh, let's try history. History it is for this question. The first steam-powered ship to cross the Atlantic was named for what Georgia city where it was built? The Savannah. Yes, Savannah is correct. Select. Uh, let's try entertainment again. Question on entertainment. A team of brothers never used their real first names of Leonard, Adolph, Julius, and Herbert. But they did stick with what real last name? Marx. Yes, the Marx brothers. Very good. You need five to win. Um, let's try uh, sports and leisure again. Here's your question, Stan. In the 1950s, what tiny toy cars were developed and named for the small container they could fit into? The soapbox uh, derby No, cars. that is not right, Marna. Matchbox. Matchbox cars is the answer, Marna. You're in control, you need five to win. Uh, history. Question. A women's rights advocate gave her name to what Turkish pantaloons that she wore under her skirts? Bloomer? Yes, Amelia Jinx Bloomer. You need four to win. You're tied with Mitch, Stan, you need five. Marna, Geography. Select. Pardon? Geography. For this question. Oklahoma City is the capital of Oklahoma, but Kansas City is not the capital of Kansas. What is the Kansas capital? Toledo? No. Stan. Topeka. Topeka, Kansas is right. Stan, select, please. You're five back. Um, let's try sports and leisure again. Okay, for this question. What religious holiday falls on the Sunday after the first full moon after March 21st, but before April 26th? Mitch? Lent? No. Marna? Easter? Easter is right. Marna, select please. Geography. Geography? Here's your question. What cool place, when discovered by Admiral Robert Peary, made him feel like he was on top of the world? North Pole. That is correct. You need three to win. Select. History? Here's your question on history. What Egyptian president was assassinated by rebel soldiers in 1981 as he was reviewing his troops in Cairo? Sadat? Yes, Anwar Sadat. You need two to win. Entertainment. Here's your question on entertainment. In the 1980s, what NBC ET came to earth after attending Malmack High for 122 years, where he majored in software? Alf. Alf is right. Gordon Shumway. You need one to win, and it's on geography. That sound means we have one minute to play in the game. When that minute is up, if no one has completely filled their pie, the player with the most lighted wedges wins. Again, good luck to all. Marna, answer this. You have won the game. What eight-letter word is the opposite of the Orient? Anybody? Stan. Europe. No. Mitch? The answer is Occident. Occident. For control of the game, what South American country is ten times as long as it is wide? Mitch? Chile. Chile is right. You're in control. You need four to win. Art and literature. Art and literature for this question. What name is given to the art of carving intricate designs on whalebone or ivory? Anybody? 
Rimshaw. Rimshaw is the answer. You didn't get in in time. This is for control. What is the weapon of choice that's usually right by the side of adventurer Indiana Jones? Marna. Whip. Yes, that is correct. The bull whip. You're in control. You need one answer on geography, Marna. Answer this, you have the win. In the U.S., we call our geographical division states. What do the Canadians call their divisions? Territories? No. Yes, that is correct. That is acceptable. You win the game. <laughs> Sorry, Marna. <laughs> Our first choice was provinces, but also acceptable were territories. So I didn't mean to throw you there. Congratulations, you win the game, $500 in this prize. Randy, what do we have? Marna, it's Ashley's five-piece bar display and entertainment cabinet designed in smart contemporary white. Super gloss finish with brass finish accents. World-class furniture furnished by Ashley. Congratulations. Marna, again, congratulations. You have $1,000 in the trip to Mazatlan in our Trivial Pursuit Challenge round. You can win that if you come back winners in just a moment. Mitch, you won $100 and a nice parting gift. Stan, you win a nice parting gift, no money. And our thanks for giving us a great game. Mitch, you were terrific. And Stan, you were coming up strong. We'll be right back with Marna to see if she can win the vacation to Mazatlan right after this. Well, we're back with today's champion, Marna Deach, a bartender from West Hollywood, California. Marna, again, congratulations. She's now going to have a chance at $1,000 and a trip to Mazatlan, which would be nice. I think you'll agree, Marna. It's very easy. All you have to do is answer six of these questions correctly in 45 seconds or less. Every time you answer a question, we light up a wedge of your pie. So let's put 45 seconds on the clock. Here is your first question. Good luck. In 1954, the U.S. submarine Nautilus became the first in history to use what type of power? Nuclear? Yes. In the 60s, long before Air Jordans, the brand of sneaker to wear was called PF what? Flyers? Yes. How many Russians have set foot on the moon? Zero. Yes. Who played Vietnam DJ Adrian Kronauer in the film Good Morning, Vietnam? Robin Williams. Yes. Who became president upon the unexpected death of Franklin D. Roosevelt? Truman. Yes. What English author wrote The Return of the Native? Lawrence. No. What is the primary metal extracted from bauxite ore? Pass. In what game do you get crowned king if you make it to your opponent's first row? Checkers. Yes. Yeah. That's all you need. Yeah. Congratulations to you. Why did checkers give you, I mean, you answered so many questions during the game and during the bonus game that were so much harder, but checkers, you played checkers before, right? Uh, chess and checkers. I was like coming out with the ch, but I couldn't finish it. Well, Marty, you won the trip to Mazatlan, and here's Randy to tell you about it. Indeed, Marna will fly you to the sun for six days at the Hotel Playa Mazatlan in Mazatlan, Mexico. Located on the nicest swimming beach in Mazatlan, fresh water pools, restaurants, and dancing under the stars. Enjoy Fiesta Mexicana at the Hotel Playa Mazatlan. Congratulations, Marna. Again, congratulations, as Randy said. We'll be back to review what she missed in just a moment. Well, Marna, you missed uh, Thomas Hardy. You said Lawrence for the question, the English author who wrote The Return of the Native. The primary metal extracted from bauxite or aluminum, you passed on that one. To sum it up, $500 for winning the game, $1,000 for winning the trivia challenge. You won a grand total in cash and prizes over $3,500. Again, congratulations. We hope you had fun playing Trivial Pursuit. Wink Martindale, see you next time. Bye-bye. Some of our participants will receive Bushnell InstaVision Focus Free Binoculars. Designed with a sport grip hand strap for convenience and style that brings the sports fan to the action. Furnished by Bosch and Loam. And Lee Press On Body Tattoos. Press on a fashion statement. Lasts for days. Easy off. Press on fun. Lee Press On Tattoos. And at last, nationally advertised nail products at an affordable price. Fancy finger sculptured nails, acrylic or gel. Quality made affordable by Lee Nails. And knows better the spray relief without addictive drugs. And knows better the gel that soothes with vinyl and aromatic vapors from Lee. And brush away nail fungus with antifungal nail treatment. And for tips to repair, Lee antifungal instant nail glue. Lee in the nail beauty product section. 